When I got to Pueblo, first thing I did was take my hundred dollars. I went to the bank and I got, I gave the hundred to Wells Fargo. And I went to zero five minutes after I was there. The, the, the reason this is important and I hope people get this is because I was no longer managing money and it forced me to go make contacts with people. Over 1,700 new millionaires are created every single day in the U.S. alone, and more than double that across the globe. They're people from all walks of life, most of them people just like you and I. So the big question is this, how are so many people who didn't inherit money or have any special advantages overcoming the odds and becoming millionaires? That's the question, and this show will give you the answers. My name is Jeff Lerner, and welcome to Millionaire Secrets. Welcome to another episode of Millionaire Secrets. Your host, Jeff Lerner, always uh, thrilled to be back with you. And today, I'm going to introduce someone who doesn't need a ton of introduction, but I'm going to do it anyways. Mr. Grant Cardone, CEO of Cardone Capital. He's a speaker. He's a pretty uh, prolific entrepreneur, author, wrote the 10X Rule, which is one of the books that inspired me to do what I'm doing. Uh, manages, a, I think, a hair under, maybe hair over $2 billion in real estate with a B. So he's a, he's a baller and we're glad he's here. Welcome, Grant. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to dig in here and uh, not to be awkward, but real quick, I'm going to snap a pic for the Instagram story. All right, that much is done. Let's talk about it. You've got a TV show coming out and I listened to, I'll, I'll, I'll disclose, disclose, I listened to your interview with Billie Jean. So I know you've had a little bit of a tense relationship with the, the TV format, but it sounds like you're finally breaking through and you got a big thing happening that airs tomorrow. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah. So I've been, I've been, you know, I've been trying to do a TV show for 10 years now, uh, an entrepreneur show before entrepreneur shows, before the profit, before shark tank, I was trying to do, uh, I did a show called, um, uh, what was the name of that turnaround King with this, with uh, national geographics. It was the wrong channel. They picked it up. They bought eight, they dropped two, they, they played two and then dropped it because I, I basically lowered their demographic by, uh, I think it was 15 or 16 years and it terrified the bow ties <laughs> at National Geographic. People just, wanted to hear David Attenborough talking about the, the elk in the wild, in the wilderness. And yeah, they, they just, they just couldn't go from Titanic, you know, from covering the Titanic, uh, to this dude, you know, trying to turn business around. But this was like, I think this was maybe, 10 or 11. So yeah. this was, we were just coming out of the recession. Uh, they didn't want a hard guy, you know, spanking people, pushing right. people around and just in it for the money. So um, Discovery Channel came to me about in January and said, hey, January last year and said, hey, would you do a show where we drop you off in a town you've never been to? You don't have any money. You lose your name. Could you build a million dollar business out of it? And I'm like, yeah, I can do that. How long do I have? 90 days. I'm like, oh, shit. I said, that's crazy. That's insane. Where, where are you going to drop me off? I can't tell you. But we, ha we have some cities picked out, but it will be a city that's been, um, that, that is, has been suppressed for a long period of time. It's not going to be an, a big city where it's doing well. It's going to be a city that's doing poorly because they wanted to show the city, right? So uh, I agreed to do the deal, and uh, it's going to play starting January the 6th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Discovery. You're going to follow me for 12 weeks. And rather than me telling people what to do from a stage or from behind a camera or, or I'm sorry, behind a, a, a live video like we're doing now or in Clubhouse, mm -hmm. rather than me giving everybody my expert advice, I'm like, hey, just follow me for the next 12 weeks. Give me an hour for 12 Wednesdays, and I'm going to show you how to go from zero. They wanted me to build a million-dollar business. My target was a $10 million business, and I only have 90 days. I get, I can tell you a couple of things. I get sick twice from altitude sickness. I get sick once from COVID. I get shut down twice, um, and Discovery hates my guts. So 
and the crew and the and the crew hates me, but we're going to all work together because the result we we, we yeah. will all work together again because the results of what I did in those ninety days in Pueblo, Colorado during COVID with forty million people uh, unemployed, the 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 what happens is like freaking crazy. Even in my world, it's crazy. Like look, looking back, knowing what what you guys are going to see, um, you're going to see a guy that will do whatever it takes. That is completely. If you don't like Ruthless Grant, you're gonna hate. You're gonna hate this show. This, this is you're gonna Grant love it. This is Grant with his back against the wall. Yeah, exactly. Because, dude, I like. I have no money, no credit, and I got a. I got a clock. Mm-hmm. I got 90 days, and and my staff knows when when I'm under a clock. The closer it gets to the to the time, uh, the 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 tougher the environment gets. So every day I had a clock in my face. So. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see it. And I'm sure, I'm sure discovery, you know, personality conflicts aside, I'm sure they won't mind all the viewers and all the ad revenue. So I'm sure that'll, that'll work itself out. But uh, so we get the premise. Uh, I can't help but comment that, you know, 10X is great, but 10X zero is still zero. So starting with nothing's, uh, you know, kind of doesn't matter. But, but I mean, and I don't know how much you can share about the no, show. No, they, they gave me a goal. They, they you know, they, they, they took my money away and they right. took my credit, my credit facilities away and they took my contacts away. But I still had a target. OK, so the target, the goal, 10X is really it's like take a goal and multiply times 10. Whatever you think, if you got a problem in your life, I got thirty thousand dollars worth of debt or three hundred is too much. No, what you need is 10 times more. Yeah. Like even your problem should be 10 X. So, so that's why you did 10 million. It, the goal was a million. You're like, screw that. I'll do 10. I said, dude, let's just go for 10 million. Cause then I could come up with a strategy that will probably fail me anyway. Right. But, but you can I'll only get 10% of the way there. Still hit your target. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. So, okay. So I'm curious and, and I'm asking for you specifically in this, you know, somewhat artificial situation, but also in general, like, a guy that's got nothing. Yeah. Where do you start? And I've thought about this before. Like if I had to totally start over and lost all my resources, do you, do you go sell something and leverage that skill? Do you market something? Do you tr- offer paid services? Like what, where does a guy start when he's got nothing? Good question, man. Is that, and I'm going to find out tomorrow at 8 p.m. Well, Eastern so the time. First, right? thing I did, first thing I did was got to zero. I needed to get to zero. OK, so in my case, I had to because of my social media following, I had to shave my head, grew my beard out, because if I get discovered, the whole deal gets blown. Right. Like I can't be Grant Cardone. If I if if Annie runs into me and she does business with me and we start building something and she finds out I'm Grant Cardone, it unwinds the whole deal. So the game, the game, and it really was a game to me. It, it had very specific parameters. Like any game you ever play, you, everybody's had this experience saying, what are the rules again? Tell me what the rules are. 90 days, no money, can't use my name. So they gave me a hundred bucks in an old truck and, and a blank phone. They gave me a fresh phone with no names in it. So I'm like, I'm doing the same thing you're doing. What's the first thing I do? First thing I need to do is not be a manager. So, so I go from, okay, I'm not a manager. I watched Glenn Stearns do this last year. He, right. he did the first year. The first season one was with a guy named Glenn Stearns. And I watched Glenn take a hundred dollars and start buying food with him. And what I noticed while I was watching that, because I'm, I'm a student, like I, I, I watch people and I watch for the mistakes. I think Budo said, you know, uh, um, anyone can learn from their own mistakes. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And so I watched Glenn go from $100 to $88 to $64 to $46. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, when I got to Pueblo, first thing I did was take my $100. I went to the bank and I, got, I gave the 100 to Wells Fargo. And I went to zero five minutes after I was there. Now, the, the, the reason this is important, and I hope people get this, is because I was no longer managing money. And it forced me to go make contacts with people. I was now forced to get shelter, food, and water from mm-hmm. people. You got to remember, not only do I not have money, dude, I don't have a place to sleep tonight. Well, that's consistent with what you teach. I mean, I've been through some of your stuff, and you say spend 95% of your time focusing on income and only 5% dealing with expenses. That's what you're saying is eliminate the expense management so you can focus on going and getting what you can. Yeah, so it took me off of defense. I'm not playing defense now. I'm not trying to – I don't want to be a manager. If you're trying to build a $10 million business, being a manager – 
will cost you your goal. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to build a $10 million business. I'm not trying to manage money. And so again, the goals were very, very specific. It didn't say that I couldn't get stuff from other people. Um, I, I sold my truck. Like they gave me a truck and I dumped it. Gotcha. And it was a mistake. It proved to be a mistake later because I was, I, I was trying to get resources. I almost sold my phone. Hmm. Um, I just sold myself, but you know, they're like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Pueblo, so. Yeah. That's one of the parameters. No, no, no bodily fluid uh, donations. Right. You can't break the law and prostitution's against yeah. the law. Of Pueblo, gotcha. So. Gotcha. So yeah, they should have had a, just the, uh, Undercover billionaire Amsterdam edition. And, and I was worried, about, I'd worried my kids would be, you know, I knew they'd be watching at some point. So, I wanted to make them proud. <laughs> so, so, you know, as I was thinking about this, this premise, I was thinking like, what would be the hardest thing? And I got it. I'm, I'm guessing for you, but I want, I want your, your take on this, that like the total loss of leverage, like right now, you make a phone call, you can have money moved. You make a phone call, you can have a hundred people scurry about and do your bidding. All of a sudden, you got no leverage. Your time is worth, I don't know, whatever you get paid washing dishes unless you figure out a way to amplify it and you can't get anything done. How hard was that? How frustrating? How uncomfortable? Well, if you got a $10 million target, you're not going to wash dishes because you just can't, you can't wash enough dishes. So, so, so where so, do you go to, or go the, ahead, the, sorry. Goal, the, goal, the goal put a lot of things out of play. Right. The goal, when you, do, when you do the math on, this is why most people don't actually understand the 10X rule, but when you take a goal that's, that's whatever it is, right? You're making 80 grand. You're like, okay, my new goal is going to be 800 grand a year. And you can't even make 80. Like you're having trouble making 80. I get it. You can't save any money. You don't have enough time. You got two kids. Uh, you're fighting with the, your spouse. And you, you're like, how am I going to go from 80 to 800? Well, what, what, what I'm saying is, you can't even figure out how to go to 90. But when I, when I go to 800, you're like, Oh, I have to quit my job. Right. I'd have to borrow money. I can't borrow money in this position. Cause I don't have a name. I'm, I'm, I'm an alias. I don't exist. Um, but, but it took dishwashing. See, unfortunately, most people don't take their choices out. Right. It, yeah. it, it, I eliminated all the stuff. Uh, Glenn, Glenn sold a truck. He, he, he was flipping trucks. I don't want to flip trucks. I don't want to sell tires. He was selling tires and stuff. I'm not saying that's wrong because he did great. He ended up in a restaurant business. I couldn't end up in a restaurant because of COVID. Yeah. So I, first of all, I got to start eliminating stuff. I need a $10 million business in 90 days. I divide the 90 days into $10 million. And then I say, who's got $10 million. I can't go to the government. I don't exist. I'm not going to go to poor people. They don't have anything to give me. So who am I going to do business? And by the way, you're in Pueblo, Colorado. That doesn't sound like a, a mecca of industry. Uh, the average person, the average household of Pueblo makes twenty four thousand dollars a year. The town yeah, is. So, so if you make a ten million dollar business in ninety days, you're you're one of the handful of richest guys in Pueblo. I'm I'm a king. Yeah, yeah. So so again, you know I mean, crazy dude. I'll tell you a little thing. I haven't told anybody this. Yeah, yeah. I'm there four days, and I'm in million dollar homes. I'm in the most expensive homes in Pueblo and I, I, I don't think it's going to show. I don't think it's going to show up because discovery didn't understand it. They're like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, uh, I figured out how to get into two homes, the most expensive homes that are for sale in Pueblo in the first week I was there. I don't think it's going to make the show because I don't think they get it. They don't understand why I was doing that. And the reason between me and you that I was doing that is I wanted to meet the people that are selling those homes. Mm -hmm. so so yeah i mean in that scenario and again i i, I mean the show is gonna air tomorrow and we can all watch your experience what i'm trying to extract here is mappable experience because there are some people that's that's not a discover show or discovery show that's actually their life it's real life so so for that guy and and i i get this you know too i get kids and young people and disenfranchised people that are like hey i have this huge goal where do i start and, you know, they don't have much to work with. I'm, I'm, how much can you share about your strategy, if not your tactics on like, how do I go from zero to hero fast? Yeah. So, I, I, so, go ahead. so those, those people you're talking about, they, they actually don't have a goal. They have a selfish passion. Oh my God, I want to change the record business or I want to do, uh, I have this great idea for blah, blah. But I'm like, dude, but it's not going to ever make any money. Mm-hmm. 
Like I was so clear. Oh, I want to change the world, but you're broke. You can't change the world if you're broke. It's never been done in the history of the world, including uh, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa was not broke. Everybody's like, oh, Mother Teresa never had anything. Mother Teresa is the perfect, the perfect um, example of what I did. Mother Teresa never had any money. She didn't need money because she was connected to people yeah. who would fund her projects. And so unfortunately, the, the kids that you're talking about, they're like, I want to do X, but I'm not willing to give up anything. And I want to get there. And, you know, nobody wants to fund that. Right. So, yeah, and so, they haven't developed any skills that offer any value to the people that steward the resources. And, and they want to do it on their own, which no one has ever done in right. the history of the world. Right. Uh, so one little trick is when I went to Pueblo, I wasn't looking to do something on my own. I wasn't even looking to start a new business. Mm -hmm. My preference, I didn't pull this off, but my preference was to, to literally drop in on a guy that had a business and build it up and get a piece of it. That's so failed by adding value and yeah, exactly. by being a value multiplier. It, it, because if I could, if I could take his company and add a hundred million dollars worth of value and get 10%, I would have, right. I would have gotten a $10 million valuation for my part, my new partnership. So out of the, the myriad of skills that <laughs> I know you have, because I followed you for a long time, what skills were you going into those situations trying to leverage to add value? In other words, what skills should people be developing that add the most value to going concerns? People. Just people, people, skills. people skills, man. You just need to know how to, I need to know how to add value to people's lives. You know, so how, how do I make contact in the first, the first seven days, the only metric I measured for seven days was how many people could I meet hmm. and, and were they quality people? Like, I know this is going to sound terrible to a lot of people out there, but like most truth they, does. So go ahead. Yeah, exactly. If they couldn't help me, I didn't spend time with them. Yeah. So, so I know people find that brutal, but look, man, I was raised by a single mother and, you know, I watched my mom suffer and I watched her not be connected and never really get ahead. She did all the right. I mean, she, she was a great mom and she did all the right things, but she never got connected and she never got ahead because of that. So her entire life was spent really scared about money. And I decided when I was 16 years old, I'm like, I am not going to live like this. I am going to figure out how to get mine so that I can take care of mine. And so that maybe I take care of mine. I'm not worried about mine anymore. And I can actually take care of others. Um, so, you know, there's two other women that are going to do this show. They're going to drop all three of us at the same time. I'm sure they have completely different strategies. I'm sure they're nice people. They're probably phenomenal at pulling heartstrings and making the world feel good. I'll guarantee ain't nobody going to keep up with my results. <laughs> yeah. So, so that said, I mean, are you allowed to tell us how it ends? Yeah, it ends like this. It ends with America under, uh, you know, having a couple of things they walk away with. First of all, America will hate me and some of them are going to hate me and some of them are going to love me, but everybody will look at me and say, dude, that guy did that. That is ridiculous. Second thing people are going to walk away with is they're going to, the idea that you need money to make money will be debunked forever. Mm, nice. Like the thing I'm most proud of in this show is like, you cannot watch this show and ever say that to yourself ever again. And the, set, the third thing is you will never use time as your excuse again, ever, because you're going to see me under a very, very compressed short period of time. Despite COVID, despite getting sick from altitude sickness twice, and despite being quarantined 14 days, I didn't even use the full 90 days. Huh. Were you, were you allowed to be in touch with your family during this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, that, that was part of the deal. I'm like, I, I thought I was going to bring my family out. I mean, between me and you, I, I, Jeff, I thought, I told Sabrina and Scarlett and my wife, I said, I'm going to have you guys out. I'll have you out there in six or seven days. When I got to Pueblo, I looked around, I called my wife and I'm like, you guys aren't going to be coming out here for at least a month. And then a month turned into 84 days. They would not be able to come out for 84, 85 days, something like that. Not until the right to the end. Um, just because it really wasn't safe enough. My environment was not safe. I lived on 
uh, beans and rice and quinoa for, for 84 to 85 days. And then, um, but I was able to call home. Thank God I could call home because uh, the, I got a lot of inspiration from them each night. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you were, you were leaning on them heavily. That sounds uh, pretty ruthless. So uh, what, what would you say, and I don't know how much time you have, so feel free to cut me off if we hit the block, but uh, what was the hardest thing you, you, you experienced in this time? The hardest thing was telling people I was somebody I'm not. You know, I had a new, another name. Lewis Curtis was my name. And, um, you know, I've used the name Grant Cardone tens of thousands of times. Not, not, I've introduced myself to, to, to more, more than, more than most people introduce themselves. Um, hey, Grant Cardone here, Grant Cardone here. <laughs> like, like yeah, I've yeah. done so many times in streams and Facebooks and stories and like, you know, it's a new world we live in. Right. So, uh, I had to undo that. I literally would have to, I wrote on my mirror, I am Lewis Curtis. Yeah. Did you ever slip? Uh, yeah. One time I slipped in a meeting. I got excited. I closed the deal. The guy gave me a $10,000 check and I'm like, okay, you need to tell your staff, you need to tell them that grant, you got to tell them to grant me full access to everything. <laughs> I covered it that quick. Nice. nice. So, uh, yeah, I, I did. I did slip once. Um, well, man, I, uh, I am excited to, I will, I will, genuinely be a be a viewer tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern i don't think i have a conflict um grant this has been wonderful if you do if you do you can always get their app i think they, they just dropped uh discovery plus it's four bucks a month or something and um uh, then you can watch i think you can watch two or three shows before uh you can actually watch them on tv so you can always get discovery plus it'll be worth it i promise you it'll be worth four bucks a month to watch this one show if you never watch anything else on Discovery. I wish I owned it uh, because I would sell it for millions. Yeah. Uh, just this one show, I think, will become an educate. It, it'll be used in schools and colleges to demonstrate what people that don't have anything, the disenfranchised, the people that don't have much or enough. Um, if you don't have money and you don't have time and you want to know how to build a $10 million business, watch Undercover Billionaire Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll show you how. Yeah. I mean, the thing I would I would add to that is if you don't have to, you, you, it doesn't take money to take money, but it takes value to create value. Yeah, you, have to, you have to level something up in your life, a, a, a sales skill or a, the ability to code software, the ability to translate from English to Mandarin Chinese. Like you got to have something got to come with something. Yeah. Amen. All right, man. Well, uh, this appreciate you, Jeff, appreciate you doing this. Appreciate you taking an interest, man. And, and, uh, uh, um, thank, I'm thankful to grateful to that you're sharing this with your audience. Yeah. Thanks so much for being a guest on millionaire secrets grant. This is wonderful. We'll, uh, we'll all be watching and thank you as always to the viewers and listeners. You guys are the best part of this show and why we do what we do every day. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks buddy. Thank you for watching Millionaire Secrets. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and leave us a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know whenever we release a new episode. Also, if you wanna learn the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy, click the link in the description below to claim your free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut. And don't forget, Millionaire Secrets is available on all the major podcast platforms as well. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can listen on the go. Thanks for watching.